as we worship today, we give the Lord total praise. Total praise out of everything that we are, everything that we have. We praise him with our gifts. Come on, choir.
Defying Gravity today, and I want to thank our lay leader, Mr. Wayne Pierce, for leading us so well last week during Laity Sunday as you talked about what it meant to be tethered to God. We started the series talking about discovering gravity. What does it mean to have gravity, to have financial gravity, and to be sucked into a black hole by debt or by being out of sync with God in terms of how we use the resources that God has so generously given to us. The second week, we talked about breaking free of this gravity. What is it going to take to be the generous people that God created us to be? What is it going to take to sort of break free of this me, me, me kind of world that we live in and be the disciples who God created us to be that are generous and care for one another? And last week, we talked about being tethered to God and how that helps us to become generous people. And so today, we will finish our Defying Gravity series as we talk about what happens when we get it right, when we break free of this financial gravity, and when we can break free to be the people that God has created us to be. So if you'll turn in your bulletins or your Bibles or your electronic devices to Luke chapter 16, we'll be beginning our reading in the 10th verse, Luke chapter 16, beginning in the 10th verse, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who dearly loved their money heard all this and scoffed at them. Then he said, you can't be righteous in public but detestable in the sight of God, for God knows your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. So come by here and allow your Holy Spirit to blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire through us and through this place, oh God. Take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said comes straight from you, oh God. For if the Holy Spirit does not preach this morning, there will be no preaching here. So have your way in this place. Have your way in us and through us and among us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We find ourselves in the middle of a long list of parables that Jesus is teaching the disciples and the Pharisees. See, some of these parables are for the church people. You know what I'm talking about? The people who are supposed to get it, the people who worship day in and day out and they come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and they're in Sunday school and they know what it means to be the people of God and some of these parables are for people who are just trying to figure out who this Jesus is and what a life might look like with God. But 
the parable that opens Luke in the 16th chapter is one of those odd parables that's for both of those kind of people. It's both for the Pharisees, the church people who are supposed to get this thing, and for the disciples and all the crowds gathered who are trying to figure out what a life might look like with Jesus Christ. It's the parable of the shrewd manager, the parable of a steward, someone who is given something by the owner and asked to carry out a duty on their behalf. Sound familiar to you? We've been talking about that we are all stewards of what God has given us and whether or not we are being good stewards is an opportunity for us to make some adjustments in life. This parable of the shrewd manager tells a story of a steward who goes around and who cuts the interest off the bills of the people who owe his master money. This parable confuses people a lot. <laughs> it confuses people because they say, is this steward stealing from his master? Or is this steward sowing goodwill into the community so that he might have a place to go if things go south? We don't ever really get the answer to that. <laughs> We're left to wonder and to discern with God what this steward is actually trying to accomplish. But what we do learn from this parable is this. Faithfulness matters. Faithfulness matters. See, we have to begin to look at our lives as stewardship. We have to begin to look at our time as a gift from God that is to be shared with other people. We have to begin to look at our resources, our food, and our money, and all of the things that we have amassed. We have to begin to look at all of that as an opportunity to share with one another. Nothing we have is ours. Not even the breath we breathe, Aaron. It's all a gift from God. It is all an opportunity to, for God to use us to make an impact on somebody else. See, the shrewd manager learned that if he just kept everything to himself and he did exactly what his master told him to do and to bring the rates higher and higher and higher and higher, then people couldn't live. But when he began to sacrifice his own commission. That's, that's what the interest was on these bills. It was his payment. When he began to sacrifice what he was getting from the bill of his master, he began to see that other people could live and then they would share with him what they had left over and his abundance grew because of the abundance of the community. In which ways are we sharing in which ways are we sharing generously what God has shared with us? This is a hard question. It makes us put a mirror up to our faces. A mirror that says, all right, how much is enough? A mirror that says, how does God want to use me today? A mirror that says, if somebody is still sleeping on the front steps of this church or in the doorway of Midtown Assistance, what is it that I need to do to make sure that they can be warm when it's 35 degrees outside today? Did you sleep well last night? I didn't. 
Because I was wondering where our friends that sleep around this perimeter were going to go because it was cold in my house and I refused to turn on the heat because I didn't want to pay the bill. (laughs) But that was a choice I had to make. See, when we understand how to defy the gravity of me, 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 and more, 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 then there is more than enough to go around. I want everybody to turn around. Everybody, turn around. Those of you who are on this side, I want you to look back in that corner. Those last four or five pews are empty. Do you know who usually sits in those last four or five pews? Our homeless friends and neighbors. They're missing today. Are they missing because it's cold and they couldn't get here? Are they missing because they froze last night? These are the kind of questions that we have to ask when we get it right, when we defy gravity. These are the kinds of questions when we have to ask when we become the kind of disciples that Jesus created us to be. God created us to be people who worry about our neighbor when it's 35 degrees outside. God created us to be the kind of people that share everything we have so that nobody has to sleep outside when it's freezing. God created us to be the kind of people that share so that we can make sure our community eats. (laughs) Jeremiah tells us that in seeking the welfare of the city, We find our own welfare. Atlanta first. (laughs) Y'all, that's Tony. That's Tony's back seat right there. Look at what God has done. (laughs) In seeking the welfare of the city. Our own welfare is tied up there. If we want to be around for the next 160 years, we've got to defy gravity. If we want to be around for the next 160 years, our conversations about our resources can't be about us. It can't even be about this beautiful sanctuary. It can't be about this expansive building. It can't even be about this choir. It can't be about this organ. It can't be about all of the things that we do to make us happy if we want to be the church for the next 160 years at 360 Peachtree Street we must defy gravity we must get it right and it must be about God's people and it must be about seeking the welfare of this city for if we are faithful in little things God will bless us to be faithful in large ones. If we are faithful for Tony, God will allow us to be faithful to worship in this place. But if we don't ask why Tony's missing, then God won't honor us with greater responsibility. If we hoard what we have. God won't bless us generously. Every single time we have a decision to make about how we spend our resources, we must ask ourselves, are we getting this right? 
Are we defying gravity? Are we being faithful with what God has entrusted unto us? Because you can't serve two masters. Because you'll end up hating one and loving the other. You'll be devoted to one and you'll despise the other. Jesus says in red letters, you cannot serve both God and money. So what's it going to be? Are we breaking free? Are we shifting our priorities? Is it about us? Is it about how much we can keep? Is it about being fearful that we will run out? Or is it about being so generous? That God blows our minds and provides beyond anything that we can ask or seek or imagine. And now, when you go to Hospitality House, are people concerned about how much you withheld from them or are they grateful that you showed up for them? They're grateful. See, Friends, <laughs> defying gravity yeah. has everything to do with the people of God and everything to do with our own spiritual journey. And if we can break free from our cultural norm to hold and to keep and to just, you know, do what we usually do, my daddy used to say, are you tipping God? <laughs> he did. Are you tipping God? Or are you understanding that you're the steward to give back what God has so generously given unto you? In 160 years of ministry, we've been blessed. We've been abundantly blessed in this place. It's time to return that blessing. It's time to remember the sacrifice of Jesus, the Christ who went to Calvary's mountain and was sprung out on a cross for us, bled and died, and then on the third day got up out of a cave so that you and I might have life and have life in abundance. Do you think Jesus did that so we can be selfish? Or do you think he did that so that we can care for one another and give generously for the welfare of our city? We're going to celebrate communion this morning. And as we celebrate Holy Communion, we're going to bring our estimate of giving cards to the altar rail. And I'm going first because I'm your leader. <laughs> and Pastor Robert's going next because he's a leader in this congregation too. And we're going to put our estimate of giving cards on this altar rail. And we are going to lead the way in generous and sacrificial giving to this church. Because this church, this church at 360 Peachtree Street, can indeed make incredible impacts in this city as we move beyond what we want and seek the welfare of our community. It's your turn. If you don't have a card, if you forgot it at home or you need one, they are available here at the door or in the back. And I'm sure one of our ushers will generously give one to you so that you can make a difference. 
And if you're not ready today, that's okay. You can mail them to the church office. Our finance committee will be happy, happy to help you be faithful in this thing so that we can be faithful in so much more. I want to invite our communion servers to join us here. And I want to invite the Reverend Mike Selleck to join us in serving and leading in communion. Many of you know that Mike and Chris um, have been my other parents. And Mike has been my boss and my youth pastor and my friend and my uh my coach and everything. And so it's a privilege for me to have Mike here with us today. Y'all come on in and we'll lead in this celebration of Holy Communion. Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them up to the the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come come again. again. Would you pray? Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Now through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is an open table. This is not a United Methodist table um, or even Atlanta First table. This is Christ's table, and you are invited to come. We have gluten-free elements available. Should you need them, please let the server who is serving you know that you are in need of gluten-free elements. We invite you to come following the direction of the ushers. Come with your hands in the sign of a cross, signaling that this is a gift that you receive. You cannot earn it. You can't take it. It won't just show up for you. It is a gift given to you. We will celebrate communion by intention. That means that you'll be given a piece of bread and you will dip that bread in a cup and we will celebrate communion together. The table is set. Won't you come? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.